What's up guys, it's Steven with techmaker.tv. This is building a link shortener with Ruby on Rails part six. So far we've yet to do anything in a browser. We've been writing some specs and we should be all green because I haven't come back and changed anything. And we had just worked out a controller that we're going to use to actually give us back our short link. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate a new controller with an index page that's going to basically be the, the page you would land on when you come to the website. So essentially a home page. And then we're gonna put a form on that page that's gonna use our links create action over here. So we're just gonna generate this like Rails G controller. We'll call it home and it's gonna have an index. And this is just gonna set up a route a controller and a actual page for us. So let's open up our routes folder, or routes file rather, and let's take a look at what that got us. So now we have a get slash home index, and what I wanna do is actually change this to be root to uh, home index like this. Let's save that and let's run our server and let's actually jump over into an actual browser. So we'll start a server with Rails S over here, and this should boot us up a server running on localhost 3000. Okay, so I have my server running and I've rearranged my screen a bit. I've got my code on the left and a browser on the right. You can see here we've successfully got a home index as our root, and if we want to see that, we can go over here into our file system, go down into app, views, and we can close some of this stuff so you can see a little bit more easily. Go down to views and we have home index and you can find our little bit of HTML here that's rendering. Okay, so what I wanna do is go ahead and close all of this because we don't need it. And I'm gonna open up my home controller here. And on the home controller, I'm gonna initialize a new instance variable and it's just gonna be at link equals link.new. Let's actually open up our schema really quick. I just want to remind myself what I called this. So we have an original URL attribute on the schema. So then in our uh, home index, what I'm going to do here is just drop in a form for at link. And then we'll do form Okay, and then what we're gonna put in here is just a form dot uh, text field, and then we'll say for original URL, and then we'll just have a form dot submit. Okay, so here now you see you have a little text field to create link. So let's just fill it out and see what happens here. So if we do just some text, create link, links create is missing. Okay, so now to fix that, what we need to do, because remember in our tests we specified and in our uh, controller actually, we're responding to JavaScript. So what we wanna do is say remote true, and I need to, there we go, now it's highlighting properly. So. Now we are basically specifying right here with this remote true says, make this a JavaScript form. So let's go back and let's do that again. So nothing happens and that's because in our create.js, nothing is happening. So what's happening here, um, if we look through uh, the actual flow, so we're hitting the create action um, and then, and that's happening because we're using this form for link, which, you know, using naming conventions in Rails, it knows that because this is a link object that should go to the links controller create because it's just a create form. Um, then we're hitting this links action and or create action, and then it's automatically, again, using naming conventions, hitting this create.js, but there's nothing in here. So let's just alert here. So right now we're just getting the plumbing all in place, essentially. We just wanna make sure that we have everything hooked up. So if I click this create link again, so now we can see that we're going through the whole cycle. We're submitting the form, hitting the controller, and rendering out the view. Okay, cool. So one quick change I wanna make. In Rails 6, you're actually supposed to use form with instead of form for. 
So we can say form with model colon, and this should work exactly the same. So let's refresh this and then try that again. And we're still getting our here output, so that's good. Okay, so let's make this uh, create.js do something slightly more interesting. So I'm gonna open up my console over here. And if we go back to, let's close that for just a second. If we go back here, so we're, um, that's not what we want. We wanna see the links controller. Okay, so what we're doing in here is just to refresh our memory, we're loading up our new shortener service, passing in the original URL from the params. And then we're just trying to shorten the link and get back a link in a link object. So let's actually do something a little bit better in here. So we have a link object, which you can see right there on line five. And remember, this is handing things over to this createjs.erb. So what I'm gonna do is say, uh, let's just say variable um, lookup code equals, um, and then what we'll do is say a string and then pass in or use some erb tags here. Um, and we'll say at link dot lookup code. And then we'll just console.log the lookup code. So let's save this and then let's just create link again. And so you can see here that we're actually, it's working exactly how we expect, right? Because if we go back to our actual link model, you can see that we have a validate uniqueness of lookup code, but we can actually have the same URL because we're not validating an original URL that it's unique, um, which is great, right? Because that means that um, people could, you know, different people could submit the same URL and they get their own code, and then you can keep track of how many people hit the different ones, something like that. So that's cool. Um, we're also uh, running our validations properly. It seems like if we don't put anything, what happens? Well, no, that's allowing it for some reason. Um, we can see here that actually we're missing some validations as well, right? Because we shouldn't be able to just type random text and create a link. Um, and let's actually, you know what? I'm saying that we didn't do that right, but let's actually do something really quick. So I am going to jump over into my gem file and down here in development test, I'm going to add another gem called Pry Rails. And I believe you can use some of these other gems or something built in to do this now, but I'm really familiar with Pry, so I prefer it. Uh, so I'm gonna stick with it. So what we're gonna do is hit our terminal, stop our controller, we're gonna bundle. That should get that hooked up for us. So we got Pry now, we got our server back going. Okay, so then what we can do is in our links controller, we can binding.pry right here at the end. Okay, now let's create this link again. Okay, so what that's gonna do is back in our server, we're stopped right here. So now we can investigate this link. So you can see here that we have a link with an ID of eight, lookup code, blah, blah, blah. The critical thing is that there's an ID which means that this has been saved to the database. So let's go ahead and type quit, which is gonna let it finish the execution. Now what I'm gonna do is blank it out, remove all the tags, create the link. Now let's look at the link this time. So this time you can see that the link is nil, and that means that this has not been saved to the database. And we can even uh, verify that further by saying at link.persisted and it's gonna say false. So what's happening right now is that this is actually coming back in our link object. So if we were to do at link.errors, you can see here that we have this message, originally URL can't be blank. And so that means that everything worked exactly how we wanted as far as handling the blank use case. So that's good. Um, what we need to do is worry about how to handle errors because what we're going to end up doing is something sort of like bit.ly where we display a short URL below the form. And so if there's errors, we don't want to be showing the code because right now it's still generating a code, which maybe that's something we could consider as the order of operations. Maybe you don't want to create a code if it's blank, but I'm not too worried about it because uh, we're not actually saving it. So that's exactly what we want in the end. Um, 
But anyway, we can also see that we have a clear other problem though, which is that we haven't validated the format of the URL at all. So we'll need to do that probably in one of the next couple of episodes. Um, but that is working fairly well as far as, you know, it's we put some text and it spits out a short code. So now everything is sort of wired up. So in the next two to three parts, here's what we're gonna do. We need to add validation on the format of the URL. We need to hook it up so that it spits out an actual URL here at the bottom. We don't just want the short code. We want an actual URL that we can use, um, which is gonna force us to do some stuff with environment variables because when we're running on localhost, we wanna spit out localhost slash short code or something like that. And when we're running on production, we want to have our actual website dot com or dot whatever slash shortcode. Um, so we need some environment variables. And we're also going to work a bit on the design because we don't want to stick with this uh, sort of just uh, default that's here. So that is it for this episode. If you have any questions, drop a comment below and I will answer it. Um, otherwise, while you're down there, subscribe to the channel and um, I will talk to you soon.